my top five baits to be fishing in November. We're gonna start with number five, and we're gonna work our way up to number one. Number five. So number five on my list of baits that you need to be throwing this November is a jig. Now there's two types of jigs that I wanna talk about today. The first is, is this type, which is that archaic style head. This right here is the Luke Clausen Dirty Jigs jig. I love this style head this time of year when the fish could be doing a little bit of everything. So it's perfect, it's one jig, only thing I have to adjust is the color and the trailer. Small mouth rivers, the Shenandoah, the Susquehanna, Upper Potomac, that's where I live. I would go with an Ike, football mini, or mini flip. It's more compact. It's a lot better for the small mouth size that we have around here. Another little tip here, gut the skirt, take the skirt off, and then you can use this head with a Ned rig as well. Number four. So number four on my list of baits to be throwing in November, lipless crankbaits. What I love about the lipless bait, hop it like you would a blade bait and stroke it, or bouncing it along the bottom slowly, trying to get that reaction straight when things get really cold. What types? I want you to look for a one knocker or a two knocker type bait, and you're gonna go with a shad pattern and a crawfish pattern. That's really all you need right now. I prefer going a little bit lighter, not the super heavy one, so I can also finish it, fish it on spinning tackle. Why spinning tackle? Castability and distance. If you are fishing schooling fish, if you're fishing places like that, or the weather really, it takes that nasty bluebird day and it shuts the bite off. That spinning tackle, you can use a lighter bait and you can bomb cast that thing the length of a football field. If you see fish schooling on the other end of that cove, you can make that cast. Number three. Number three on my list this time of year is crankbaits. The first one is a killer bee, that balsa crankbait in that nice crayfish color, Little John series in that crayfish color as well. These two baits right here are absolutely killer on the Shenandoah James River smallmouth. They will absolutely murder these baits. If the water is super clear, I want you to try this Masio green style color. It's, it's almost translucent, okay? But it still matches a lot of the crayfish we have here. And then you have your stereotypical red. The other part of it is one has a wider wobble and one is flat sided and has a more sleek, tight wobble. I like to have both on my boat when I'm fishing this time of year just to see what the fish like. This bait here is probably going to go away as the water gets colder, and then we're going to be going straight flat-sided type crankbaits. One bait that everyone knows about, and that's the man's crankbait. The man's crankbait is fantastic for these rivers because of all the thick vegetation that they have, and this allows you to be able to fish over top of that really thick grass on a higher tide. And as the grass dies back, you're going to be able to hit a lot more areas of those grass mats. The Bandit Footloose, what's nice about this is, again, you can use heavy line and just burn it right across the top of that stuff on high tide. Number two, it's the jerkbait. It's the hard jerkbait. Where we are in the country, most of our fisheries are shallow and grassy. It's really hard to throw these baits, but now that the grass is dying back and lakes like Lake Anniston and Lake are completely on fire right now with schooling fish, that's when this bait comes into play. Throw a chrome, a chrome blue, a gold sexy shad, or a clear water minnow. I prefer using really bright colors to begin with to try to attract them and then I will adjust to a more natural presentation. Number one. So my number one bait to throw this time of year is a swim bait. The type I want you to try to be throwing is a 2.8 to 3.3 Kitek. And then the thing I want you to adjust is the head. The head I have right here on now is basically a crappie head. I think it's a 136 ounce head. It is insanely light, but that is perfect for throwing it in ponds and super shallow rivers. Or I can switch to either a Matt Allen head or I think they have a guppy head that's a little bit heavier so I can get it down deeper. The next thing to adjust on this I would suggest is the line size. Just remember, the heavier the line, the more that bait's gonna wanna sit up in the water column. The lighter the line, the more it's gonna wanna drop down. Color-wise, sexy shad. Sexy shad all the way. That's like the one color I would think you could throw absolutely anywhere and have success with that. Any questions about it, please let me know. I'm happy to help any way possible. And maybe if you guys wanna go fishing, Hit me up in the DMs if you want to go fishing. Maybe we can go fishing together. That'd be a lot of fun. Talk to you later.